So maybe you want to teleport around pretty much non-stop throughout your playing of D&D, &D, and you want to play as Nightcrawler. Well, let's go ahead and build it. First things first, we got to pick a race, and there's actually a perfect race for this type of build, and that's called an Eladrin. These are special types of elves that are revolving more around seasons, and we're going to choose a winter Eladrin, mostly because of the color scheme, because they tend to be more depicted as like a bluish tint, but also because their innate abilities do happen to fit with the character of Nightcrawler. So being an Eladrin, you get some basic elf stuff like fey ancestry, so you have advantage on saving throws against being charmed and things like that, but this specific type of lineage gives you fey step. So as a bonus action, you can magically teleport, and by default, just because of this lineage, you can teleport a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus per long rest. Once you hit third level of this overall build, you get an additional feature as part of this teleportation. And specifically being a winter Eladrin, when you teleport within five feet of somebody, they have to make a wisdom saving throw or be frightened of you. And usually Nightcrawler does sort of depict a aura of fear, even if it happens to be unintentional due to prejudices in the X-Men universe. Then we gotta dive into the background because I really wanted a background that would help expand my spell lists or do something to really lean into this character but I couldn't find anything and specifically for the classes that we're going to choose because we're going to do a slight multi-class there wasn't anything that fit the Nightcrawler character as far as all of the spells that we needed to line up. So I very rarely do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a custom background. Now I tailored this background very specifically to Nightcrawler and I based it off of similar backgrounds that expand your spell list, but don't inherently grant you abilities. They just expand your existing spell list so they're not completely overpowered. Additionally, when I chose spells for this spell list, it's solely focused on the idea of Nightcrawler specifically. So if there's spells that already show up in a spell list, they might also appear on this expanded spell list as well. Creating a background that worked around all of the classes and stuff we're gonna choose just felt a little broken and like you're trying to just force things to fit even more than we already are. I wanna make sure everything I build is as balanced as possible and anything homebrew as far as creations isn't completely busted. So because of that, I tried to focus solely on this idea and the Nightcrawler background is gonna give you two skills. One is acrobatics because you used to be in the circus and two is gonna be religion because you are a very religious character. We have to choose two cantrips that get added to your spell list, but we won't be able to get those for quite a while. So we're just gonna grab Booming Blade because you do have a history of hitting people with a sword and Prestidigitation, just because you were in the circus, so doing some small magical tricks seems like a good idea. Following the templates from other backgrounds, you can have two spells added to your spell list from first through fifth level. So let's go ahead and run through all of them. At first level, I added Disguise Self and Featherfall. You were in the circus, you're used to falling from a great height, that seems to fit. But the disguise self part, you do have a device that can disguise you in various forms of the X-Men universe. So disguise self seemed like a good idea. Then at second level, we're gonna grab Misty Step. Of course we need Misty Step. It is a short range teleportation that you can do as a bonus action. We'll also follow that up with Kinetic Jaunt so you can quickly jump around and you're very nimble. It just seemed fitting for Nightcrawler. At third level, we wanted another teleportation thing even though the actual ability doesn't sync up quite as well but it's another teleportation spell, so we're gonna grab Thunder Step. It allows you to teleport from one spot to another while letting out a large boom that does some damage. We'll also grab Fear, just because you tend to make people kind of scared of you in certain situations, uh, even if it's not really intentional. Then at fourth level, we gotta grab Dimension Door. You very often grab somebody to teleport with you, so Dimension Door allows you to do that. Misty Step only allowed you to teleport yourself, Dimension Door allows you to bring somebody along for the ride. I had a lot of trouble figuring out another fourth level spell that might fit, and I figured Eladrin don't have tails, but Nightcrawler does. So let's grab Grasping Vine. We can treat that Grasping Vine as the tail attached to you, even if that's not quite how the spell works, but it was the only thing I could justify. Then the fifth level spells, which is part of why I created this entire background, is for the spell Far Step. It is basically Misty Step, but you can concentrate on it and use it every single turn without wasting additional spell slots. It's surprising how hard it is to get Far Step into another class's spell list, whether it be through other subclasses or whatever, but in general, it 
just felt like that was the only way to get this in here. And that's why I made this background. The one other teleportation related spell at fifth level is going to be teleportation circle. So obviously we're just going to grab that too. And don't worry if you want access to this homebrew background, I will include it on my Patreon along with the entire character sheet for this build. Then as far as the stats, we want a point spread that looks like this. And we're definitely focusing mostly on dexterity here. You are part of the circus. You're a very nimble character. You jump around a lot. You very agile it just makes sense then as far as a starting class we're going to choose ranger there's going to be a very obvious choice here but just try and stick with me we do have a multi-class later at first level of ranger you get access to light armor medium armor and shields pretty much every weapon and you get to choose three skills we'll grab athletics stealth and insight stealth is especially important for the nightcrawler character as you're able to kind of hide in the shadows. Additionally, when you become a ranger, you get saving throws in strength and dexterity. At first level of ranger, you would get favored enemy, but we're going to swap that out for favored foe. We need to be using our bonus action pretty often for teleportation. So spending a bonus action on Hunter's Mark kind of doesn't work as well. Favored foe allows us to essentially use Hunter's Mark but we can do it by just hitting somebody and then we immediately activate it. The only limitation is that you don't get to swap it from one character to another as you wind up defeating one of those characters. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. It allows you to boost the damage whenever you hit a creature that has this mark on it and it boosts an extra 1d4 of damage but that does upgrade as you level up in ranger. Going to 1d6 at 6th level and 1d8 at 14th level. Also at first level of ranger you would get natural explorer but we're going to swap that out for deft explorer instead which at first level gives us some languages and it gives us expertise in a skill that we have and you are very good at melding into the shadows so we're going to go ahead and take that expertise in stealth at second level of ranger you get a fighting style and we do see nightcrawler using two weapons to fight pretty often but um that's not going to work so well for nightcrawler because in order to fight with two weapons, you need to be able to use your bonus action. And we're gonna be using our bonus action for lots of other stuff very consistently. So instead of that, we're just gonna take defense because you are very nimble. You should be able to dodge attacks coming at you very easily. So defense will allow us to boost our armor class by one point. Also at second level of ranger, you get some spell casting, but the only one we really wanna worry about here is Zephyr Strike. It allows you to teleport and then strike at the same time while having advantage on that strike. Or at least that's the way you can play it off because it really just boosts your speed by 30 feet while at the same time not provoking any opportunity attacks. So you can play this up as a teleportation even if it's not really a teleportation. Also at third level of ranger you get primeval awareness but we're gonna swap that out as well for just the basic spells that you can get for primeval awareness because the original primeval awareness really just kind of sucks. Basically just giving you a vague idea of a couple creatures within a mile of you but you don't know exactly where they are. Then at third level of ranger you get to choose a ranger conclave otherwise known as a subclass and of course we're going to choose horizon walker. This subclass is focused entirely on teleporting around and sensing whether or not other people are teleporting as well. So the first feature you get is detect portal so you can sense if somebody else is opening up a portal nearby or at least within a mile and you get planar warrior so you can use your bonus action to mark a creature within 30 feet of you and deal additional force damage when you hit them with an attack this is 1d8 force damage but at 11th level of the subclass it does upgrade to 2d8 you will have to use this every single bonus action and it still only boosts your damage once per turn because it specifies that it's just the next time you hit it with an attack then at fourth level of ranger you get an ability score improvement so we're just going to go ahead and boost up our dexterity by two points then at fifth level of ranger you get misty step from being a horizon walker ranger already so we wouldn't really need it in that background that we chose but we wanted anyways just because we wanted to make sure that that background just fit the character so if you wanted this background and you wanted to apply it to a totally different build while still having access to the same spells it would still work also at fifth level of ranger you get extra attack so you can now attack twice per action at sixth level of ranger you get another addition to your deft explorer and it's called roving so your speed increases by five feet and you get a climbing and swimming speed and because nightcrawler can climb on walls this is especially fitting so you can now climb up the walls just as fast as you could run at seventh level of ranger you get another feature from being a horizon walker called ethereal step 
So now as a bonus action, you can enter the ethereal plane by essentially casting the etherealness spell as a bonus action, but it doesn't spend a spell slot to do it. You can only use this once per short or long rest, and it only lasts until the end of your current turn. So it's not quite as useful, but it's still kind of a cool thing, and it's still semi-fitting for the character. Then eighth level of ranger, you get another ability score improvement, so let's go ahead and max out that dexterity. Then at ninth level of ranger, you get access to third level spells. And horizon walkers, by default, get haste, which is actually really useful but it's going to be more useful in just a second, which I'll get into. But then at 10th level, you get more stealthiness with hide in plain sight, although you can swap it out for nature's veil, which is what we're going to do because it allows you to use a bonus action to become invisible for the turn. And you can use that feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. Also at this level from Deft Explorer, you get tireless, allowing you to give yourself a bunch of temporary hit points equal to 1d8 plus your wisdom modifier, which you can do as an action a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. And on a short rest, you can reduce a level of exhaustion which would usually take a long rest to do so then at 11th level you get another feature from being a horizon walker and this is where this subclass really shines because it allows you to teleport between your attacks as long as you're taking the attack action. You can teleport up to 10 feet before each of your attacks. And you can also be running at the same time, so you can teleport mid run and still be moving, getting a ton of movement, but also teleporting pretty consistently because you can teleport as your bonus action, and then you can teleport again right before an attack and teleport again before your next attack. and. This feature also gives you an additional bonus because if you attack two different creatures, then you get another third attack as part of this feature. You will have to attack a third creature, but that's okay because that's still a whole bunch of attacks. And this is where that haste spell gets amped up even more because now your speed is doubled with haste. You get more armor class, you get better dexterity saving throws, but you also get an additional attack. So you can wind up teleporting one more time here, meaning you get four attacks and four teleports as your action. And you can still teleport one more time as your bonus action if you want to. Now, here is where I was very, very tempted to dive into a multi-class right away because we want to get two fifth level spells so we can get that far step. This would require us to get nine levels in a casting class, but we also get more features from being a ranger if we stick with it. And we get two fifth level spells a little sooner by sticking with ranger. So that's what we're going to do for right now. So at 12th level of ranger, we get another ability score improvement and I want some more teleportation. So we're going to take Fey Touched. This teaches us Misty Step. So we can wind up swapping out the learned Misty Step from being a ranger and use that spell for something else. And you may wonder why bother wasting this feat to get Misty Step. Well, we also get a first level spell. So we're going to take Silver silvery barbs because that's pretty helpful to have and we can boost up our wisdom by one point rounding out our wisdom score getting an additional spell and getting access to messy stuff without wasting any of our learned spells but on top of that because we chose this feat we don't need to expend a spell slot to cast misty step or silvery barbs once meaning that we have one more free teleportation then at 13th level of ranger you get access to fourth level spells so we get that dimension door access at 14th level of ranger we get vanish so you can hide as a bonus action really leaning into that stealth and people have more trouble tracking you by non-magical means then at 15th level of ranger you get another feature from being a horizon walker and this is especially good for how nimble and dodgy you are because it gives you spectral defense so when you take damage from an attack you can use your reaction to give yourself resistance to all of that damage and it's like you trying to teleport just at the last second but you don't quite get it so it doesn't quite hit you quite as hard and that's kind of how this feature is described but overall it does still fit with the overall nimbleness and how much you dodge with your teleportation then at 16th level of ranger you get another ability score improvement so we're going to go ahead and boost up our wisdom score by two points because that helps a lot of our ranger casting then at 17th level of ranger we get access to fifth level spells and that's what we really wanted so we can get phase step and also teleportation circle if we want it although I almost forgot to add that you should also grab steel wind strike it allows you to choose up to five creatures you can see within range you make a melee spell attack against each one of the targets and on a hit it deals 6d10 force damage then at the end you teleport again now it's finally time for a multi-class and it's been long overdue so let's go ahead and dive into cleric nightcrawler 
Butler is very known for being a very religious character, and he even winds up joining the clergy at certain points in the comics, so it's definitely fitting for him to become a cleric. But which god should he worship? Well, he tends to be pretty fun-loving, lighthearted, and a bit of a trickster at times, so we're going to choose the trickery domain but also because it generally fits as far as the abilities. Because you can use Blessing of the Trickster, giving yourself advantage to stealth checks, or use it on somebody else if you really want to. You can use their Channel Divinity to invoke duplicity, so you can make somebody think that they're attacking where you are, but really it's where you were. In actuality, it's making a double of you with this ability, but you can use it as some sort of idea of you teleporting really fast. And we're mostly focusing on the stealth abilities with this subclass slash multiclass. So we're just gonna pick up spells relating to that with these three levels that we have available that we're gonna throw all into Cleric. So we'll have access to Pass Without Trace because that really boosts up our stealth checks. And then due to your religious nature, we'll grab Sanctuary so you can wind up avoiding getting attacked altogether. And because of the whole like X-Men movie where they had all these tattoo things all over him, I'm gonna think of that as the concept of using Shield of Faith. There's a few other spells that I would add, which I'll throw up on the character sheet, but I wanted to get the general idea of Nightcrawler really solid. That brings us to 20th level overall, which is the overall max in D&D, and I feel like I stuck as true to character as I possibly could. But if there's anything you do differently, let me know in the comments down below. And if you like D&D related content, make sure to subscribe because it really helps this channel, and apparently it makes it so you roll more nat 20s than if you didn't subscribe. And if you want to access the character sheet with all of the spells and everything, feel free to check out my Patreon, linked in the description down below. Break me just as awesome as some of these people scrolling by, and the especially awesome player character patrons, the Holy 999s, Christopher Sams, Dark of Skies, Barrow Gruel, Zach, Felix Ulick, The One, 0586, Dennis Bumgardner, Barrelist, Kevin Shirley, Zephros, That Funny Man, 57, Joshua Maynard, CGC, 2014, Panda Milkshake, Ted Z, Andrew Nobles, Carcat Kitsune, Decker Joint, Z13, Viral Nervar, Daniel Galvin and the Dino 21. Then going above and beyond that are my Dungeon Master level patrons that I play D&D with. T Brownie, Julia B. Day Oliveira, Just Wolf, Daniel Saffler, Command ZX, Cyber Society, and Zalvador. Then going above and beyond anything I ever expected is my God tier level patron, Gamestake. He helps this channel to an insane degree, so he's really earned that title. So a very special thank you to him. And if you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know by hitting that like button. And I'll be here helping you roll at least three nat 20s in your next D&D session, especially if you want to drive your DM insane by teleporting around the battlefield nonstop as Nightcrawler in Dungeons & Dragons.